The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hey, um, what are you looking for over, um, the, over there? Trying to find some shocky diodes. Oh, do you have a new wearables? I do. It's the Texas Instruments Kronos with an MSP430. That's a microcontroller built into a watch that you can program yourself. Yeah, and you know, you can do things. You can go for runs and track them, and you can hook it up to a heart rate monitor. Pretty cool. Where's right. some... Where are your wearables, Ben? Well, I'm just not into spreadsheets like you are. The kind of things I would want to wear would be tools. Like, why can't my fingers be soldering irons or screwdrivers. That's what I want out of life. Well, we do need something to do this week. Well, why don't we make a wearables project that can turn my hands into tools? Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. When I hear wearables, things you stick on your body, I think tools. In Empire Strikes Back, when Luke lost his hand in that fight, then he just replaced it with a boring, normal robot hand. Why? What a waste. I would have made like a space can opener on my hand or a lightsaber. You can still have fingers. So that's what I want. I want tools at my fingertips. Because never having to set anything down would be great. So here's what I want. I want a solder and iron. I'll solder a dispenser so you don't have to set down your iron or set down your solder. And then angle cutters would be pretty nice as well. So at first I thought maybe there could be a wrist mounted device that holds your soldering iron. Basically it would be like, it would pull it out when you needed it. But then I thought, hey, it'd be a lot more handy if it was just on the tip of your finger, literally at your fingertips. And then maybe it can uh, extend and retract automatically so you can still do things with your finger. But then when you're ready to solder it, it comes out and it's always on or heats up very quickly. Then on the left hand, I was thinking like a solder extruder, not really extruder, more of a feeder. So we have a spool of solder on the wrist and then it goes through a motor of some type that actually pulls it off the spool and along your finger, and we'd have a couple tubes along the finger, basically just have like a few leather straps. So you could maybe push your pinky finger and solder would come out. So you'd be kind of like Spider-Man, like using your pinky fingers. Well, Spider-Man does this technically. But yeah, using your pinky fingers to either control the soldering iron or control the rate of solder. So grab your snippers, but you never have to set anything down. So I think that's what I want to do. Let's take a look at the tools that we have to make this work. We're going to do this in two parts. First, we'll make the solder finger and then we'll make the solder extruder. So let's start with the solder finger. We need a battery powered soldering iron solution because cords are a pain in the butt. The Maker Fair episode, you might recall, we use this little USB soldering iron to put together our Minty Boost circuit. It's pretty wussy, but let's take a look inside and just see if it might work. That's all it has inside. A switch, a plug, and one resistor. You may have heard of something called Ohm's Law. It's not a police procedural on TNT. It's, it's actually a calculation. So you can figure out how much current, it's basically current voltage and resistance in comparison to each other. So with this thing, I'm going to measure what its total resistance is, and that'll tell us how much power it actually uses, or current. Okay, I'm just gonna touch the tongues here. Okay, about four ohms. So Ohm's law is voltage divided by resistance equals current, or current equals voltage divided by resistance, and then current would be in amps. So we take five volts of the USB divided by four ohms, we get 1.25, which means this draws 1.25 amps. And then if we take the amperage times the voltage, that gives us the watts. So it's roughly 6.25 watts, but it probably varies. So as an iron, that's pretty wimpy. Usually you want at least 15 watts for like a pencil iron. Also, a USB port on your computer is only supposed to draw 500 milliamps. Pretty much anything you plug into that is designed to take no more than 500 milliamps. So if you plug this into your PC, 
you could possibly short a fuse or do something else bad. So you shouldn't use this with your PC, but as we found in the episode, it works perfectly fine with this power brick. And the reason for that is this power brick can output up to three amps on each one of the USB ports at five volts. This is an old battery powered portable iron I had laying around and the tips remove from it pretty easily. It's almost like a little light bulb. And this takes four AAs, so it's gonna be around the same voltage as the USB iron, but it probably is going to have more current. Let's take a look. I'm gonna measure the resistance of the tip. It's 2.3 ohms, which means it's going to use more current than the USB iron did. Again, we can refer to Ohm's law. And let's see. Let's say we're gonna use this with our USB power brick, because I think this is a pretty good candidate. 5 volts divided by 2.3 ohms is 2.17 amps, all right? And this thing, as we mentioned, can source up to 3 amps, so it should work. I guess the next best thing to do is to test it. Okay, it's powered up. Actually, let's do this. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. Five seconds to melt solder. That's not bad. So for the next step, I'm gonna take this apart further and make this into a fingertip mechanism. Basically put the socket at the tip of my finger. Here are the resulting 3D parts. We have the finger slider, which has a groove for your finger. And I'm gonna probably put it right above the first knuckle, right there. And then this is the iron carriage. Not a carriage made of iron, but a carriage for the iron. And the reason I made it round, the first one that I did was kind of more traditional of a square, and then I was gonna have some teeth bite into it but I didn't think the 3D printer would have enough accuracy. So by making it round, it has constant surface all around it and there's a flat bottom, which keeps it from rotating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install our socket from the portable iron into the carriage. And then we're going to install that inside of the slider. And this will give us 1.5 inches of retraction for the soldering iron. But how are we gonna move it back and forth? My solution was to use a micro servo. And even a small servo like this is going to have a pretty decent amount of torque. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an actuator arm that will move this back and forth with the servo attached. I'm going to put a layer of captain tape around the socket before I insert it into the plastic housing. I'll just give it a little bit of thermal insulation. Normally we use this tape on the surface of the 3D printer. So that's why I have a lot of it laying around. JB Weld actually changed their packaging. They had the same packaging for decades. They finally updated it. Let's attach the heating element. So our micro servo, I think I'm gonna put right about here. I laser cut these little arms. It's kind of like what's on a old steam train. Or it looks like the steam logo, you know? Yeah, like uh, <laughs> when you're playing video games. Anyway, um, one of these will go onto the servo, like this. And the other one will attach to the carriage and then we'll use size six screws and these holes will be slightly larger than they need to be that way it can rotate on them. Yeah. The reason I did it that way was because if it was like this, uh, this arm, see how they could, they could intersect. I held this in place with some hot glue and now I'm going to put in a screw just to make sure it stays there.
want to make sure this doesn't flop around, but I also want it to be loose. So that's pretty good. If it moves on its own accord, then it's probably loose enough. I'm gonna attach the servo right about here. And I made this as low as possible, so it's gonna clamp on like this. But I have to make sure that the servo's in the right position. I'm just gonna hot glue this in place, that way I know it's working, instead of trying to make who knows how many copies of this to be exactly correct, when you can just hot glue it. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Ohm's law is a calculation that is useful for all electronics. The calculation is current equals voltage divided by resistance. Let's use today's project as an example. We have a five volt power supply and the load or resistance of the iron is 2.3 ohms. Here, let's put it there. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. that means the current is 2.1 amps. So we need a power source that can give us at least two amps. So even though your USB port in your computer might have five volts, it certainly isn't gonna give you two amps. So if you plug the iron into it, you would blow a fuse. Another way we can think about this, let's say we wanted to use something like a uh, lithium ion drill battery, which would have something like 20 volts. Again, we can take 20, divided by, okay, divided by 2.3, 8.6 amps, which is probably going to be too much. For instance, if we want to figure out the wattage, you know, most irons are measured in watts, you know, like 25 watts, 50 watts. Watts is amperage times voltage. So we could take 8.6 amps, multiply it by 20, and we would, no, 8.6, we could take 8.6 amps, multiply it by 20, and we would have a 172 watt iron, which would be pretty hot. So I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to do this. Anyway, what we can use Ohm's law for in this example is basically figuring out what the current capacity of our batteries and our circuits should be. <laughs> This Arduino is cycling between the two extremes, forward and back, with a servo controller. Let's test this out. There we go. We want to make sure we listen to it, so the servo isn't binding up in either position. You know, kind of going because that means it's not able to get to its intended position, which means it's gonna keep grinding forever, which will eventually burn up the servo. So when the servo's not doing anything, it shouldn't be making any noise. Also with these smaller servos, you don't always get the full range of motion, 180 degrees like you do with larger servos. So we're only using about 120 degrees of the servo's rotation, but it works. Let's see if it has any torque. Uh, let's try to knock something over. What else can it knock over? A liquor store? Boom. I actually think this project is pretty cool, so I'm going ahead and building two of everything. So I got these leather remnants of the craft store and I'm gonna use it to make just a little, uh, uh, you know, finger holder. <laughs> Try not to cut the tips of my fingers off, that would be gross. Friend's sister did that once. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna Battlestar Galactica, the ends as I like to call it. It's 
not just because I like Battlestar Galactica. When you um, round the edges off or make a corner out of them, it makes it less likely to be torn up. And you're probably thinking, oh great, more hot glue. Well, I'll tell you what, hot glue sticks to leather like nobody's business. That is never coming off. Well, I mean it could, but it would take a great deal of effort. Hey, we could make this into a blood oxygen sensor while we're at it. Then Allison and I could have a blood oxygen contest. So the idea is, you know, there'll probably be a switch here. So like, okay, you know, I want to solder. Right? And then when you retract it, you're able to do other things with your fingers. See? You could even like, you know, scratch your head without burning yourself. Ah. Um, one question I'm kind of wondering about is, should this turn off when it's retracted? You know, is it gonna make your, the top of your finger hot? Although I think technically your nails are dead. Is that true? They probably are dead. So I guess we'll see. Um, it, we could also have it so when it extends, it also turns on the iron, we could have a MOSFET. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. Dual wield. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I am a robot from the future. Bzz, 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 bzz. I'm using my little AVR development board to drive this. I think I'll make this like a little watch. There are two LEDs. One tells you if the tip's hot enough and red means it's not hot. It's not actually gonna sense the temperature, but since we know how long it takes for the hot tip to melt solder, which is five seconds, when you switch to active mode, it will basically count five seconds and then switch to the green light. So yeah, I'm gonna continue soldering this and put everything in that we need. The switch will basically mean the iron's always on or the iron's only on when it's extended. And this MOSFET here will actually trigger the iron. It will sync the current through it and allow it to turn on or off. Yeah. Now I'm going to be attaching this circuit to a leather strap for the right hand. And there'll be a pinky finger button to toggle whether this is in or out. Probably just glue this in place. Better make sure everything's hooked up first. So we have five volts and ground coming in here. And then we have five volts also going directly to the heating element. And the heating element is going to return through this MOSFET. I don't have it hooked up yet because when I program this, I don't want to blow out the USB on the computer. And then we have a capacitor to help with ripple on the servo. Uh, two status lights and our switch. Yeah, that should be enough. Yeah. All right. Man, I don't know. Sticking hot glue on the back of that just seems wrong. Oh, I can't bring myself to hot glue a circuit to a piece of leather, so I'm going to use this leather punch, if I can remember how to advance it. Oh, that's right, it only goes in one direction. I'm just gonna put some screws in the leather, and then we can use nuts to attach those to the PCB. Never thought I'd use this again. You never know. Because life is like a box of chocolates. Hey, this could touch your skin and could be like a lie detector test. I have almost everything wired up on this. Uh, I don't have the heating element in place because I don't want it to conduct through there yet because I'm driving it with USB and the laptop could certainly not supply 2.5 volts, but I do have this working, so toggles out, and then it's gonna wait five seconds, and the green light will come on, 
to tell you that the iron is hot. Again, it doesn't know that the iron's hot. It just knows how long it takes for the iron to get hot. So I need to figure out a better pattern for these wires just so they kind of, so there's no strain. But once I get it worked in, I think that'll help a lot too. That's not bad. Yeah. So see, you can still use, use your fingers to do stuff, but then when the time comes, it's time to solder. So you won't look too much like a cyborg. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Fun. The soldering iron finger is done and ready to go. In our next episode, we're going to be making the solder dispensing gauntlet. Basically, it'll hold solder on your wrist, and when you push a button, the motor will extrude it right to your fingertips. We'll see you then. Hmm. Solder finger. Lead finger. Lead finger. I suppose you expect me to talk. No, I expect you to die. No one will ever know who Allison is in the bog of eternal stench. Welcome to the world of dragons! <laughs> Wait, I have to turn on the lights cool. Oh! <laughs> a finger that has a soldering iron on it, or a glove that dispenses solder. I don't know if you can handle that kind of power. I think I can handle it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just make more of these. Look how cool that is. It's like Freddy Krueger. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.